One small change. That's all it takes to go from zero to hero in Ghost Runner. But can a few tweaks really make all the difference? I think so. Hello friends, it's Kodiak here, one half of the team behind Legacy Gaming, and today I'm sharing all the things I wish I knew sooner about One More Level's brand new action platformer, Ghost Runner. Ghost Runner is just as much a mental challenge as it is a physical one. Sure, you need to press the buttons in the right order to free run your way through a complicated set of rooms and clear out enemies, but without the right mindset, you may just be working against yourself. If you get stuck at a particular point in the game, do yourself a favor and change things up dramatically. If you started by going right in a room, go left. It's a simple mental trick people use all the time to trick their brain into breaking a fixation. Livid can attest to the fact that I died 160 times on one particular section of the game. And once you get into a rut, set in your ways, it's nearly impossible to break out. There's always a chance by changing up your rhythm that you may find a new solution to the problem you're facing. Ghost Runner is a deadly dance of maneuvers and combat, but sometimes your steps are off and you have to admit that. Other times, the change is just to break a mental logjam. You may not accomplish much, but you're giving your brain a much needed rest. If you want further example of this, just look at the actual development of the game. As soon as players start to get comfortable with an enemy type or new free running element, Ghost Runner throws something completely new at you. It's something you have to actively do, and let me tell you, it works. In fact, I used this technique multiple times throughout my playthrough, and it really helped me power through the game. One of my favorite things about Ghost Runner is the unique cybernetic upgrade system. Players have to move, rotate, and position various pieces in a set grid to unlock certain upgrades. If you look at the left side of your screen, you'll notice that everything is categorized. As you progress, you'll learn quickly what your playstyle is in the game. It may be tempting to focus on new abilities that you just unlocked, but the truth is you can really get by focusing on one that works for you. In my case, I found Tempest to be the most useful ability, so I focused on that set of upgrades. The catch with the upgrade system is that you don't need to fill the grid with everything under the sun. The more you leave out, the more passive focus generation you'll be able to maintain, and that means using your abilities more frequently. I didn't realize this until I had already completed Ghost Runner, and I was kicking myself because much of the filler upgrades I added weren't really doing anything. I do also want to point out one incredible upgrade, Tactical Overlay, which outlines and amplifies the colors of enemies. You may not think this is a big deal, but because you're constantly changing your motion, it's one of the easiest ways to keep tabs on targets. There's a reason the devs give us this upgrade early on in the game, and that's because it really is that powerful. On a final note about upgrades, really think through your choices, but remember, you can access this panel at any time during your playthrough, and because Ghost Runner doesn't have any difficulty settings, it's the only real way to gain an edge over a particular situation. If you're struggling on a certain mission, think about how your upgrades can help you, and don't forget, you can change them at any time. You never know. A slight change may just be the reason you get through a tricky spot. If you were curious what my loadout looks like, here's a snapshot. You won't have access to all of these right away, but this build really works for me and focuses on the things that I find most accessible in the game, like Tempest and Sensory Boost. I mentioned the Tempest ability before, and I want to be honest with you guys. I really do think this is the best ability in the game, hands down. For those that don't know, Tempest allows you to release a wave of energy from your palm, killing enemies, and here's the key, reflecting projectiles. Tempest isn't only an offensive ability, but a defensive one as well, and much more forgiving than deflection. It was an active part of my strategy as I was pushing deeper and deeper into the game. Some rooms are jam-packed with enemies, and sometimes the variety of enemies can really test your skills to the max. Having Tempest as a panic button or a quick deadly ability can drastically change the flow of an encounter. One of the big mistakes I foresee a lot of new players making is trying to use all of the abilities or split upgrades and boost each of them just a little, but I think that's entirely the wrong way to go about it. The Ghost Runner devs are giving us the tools to complete the game. They're not saying that we have to use them all, and once I realized that, everything clicked into place. While I would never want to force anyone to pick something because I said so, don't sleep on Tempest. The ability to kill enemies and reflect projectiles is a two-for-one deal, and it's hands down superior to some of the other options for this reason. Now, I alluded to this in the first part of the video, but it bears clarification. 
Ghost Runner doesn't force you to complete objectives in one set way. Sure, there are paths of least resistance, but more often than not, ingenuity is the only thing that can hold you back. This is doubly true when it comes to combat encounters. Most of these events happen in open areas with multiple ways to approach the upcoming situation. Enemies are easiest when dealt with from above, so if you have the chance to get higher than them, you'll be in a better position to land the kill. In the same vein, there's no rulebook that says you have to kill enemies any particular order. For me, the massive robot walkers always gave me the biggest challenge, so I would focus on them first, but who knows what enemies will give you that same challenge. Taking them out of the equation first not only teaches you how to deal with the enemy giving you the hardest time, but sets up the rest of the encounter to be just a bit easier. Remember, while the ultimate outcome is black and white, how you get there is a spectrum, so keep an open mind, explore every possibility, and I guarantee you'll break through some of the gameplay hurdles. Since we're talking about combat, I want to throw something at you guys. While there is combat in the sense that you can kill or be killed, if you're struggling with this aspect of the game, it helps to think of enemies as just another puzzle piece. Ghost Runner enemies are designed around simple core mechanics. For instance, the basic pistol enemy, or key as they're known in the game, fires projectiles in a straight line on a set timer. With this idea in mind, you can adjust, adapt, and overcome. As the game gets more complex, that formula doesn't change. Still not following? Here's another example. The Enforcer, those big guys with the massive guns, they combine two mechanics, a frontal shield impervious to damage, and a three-shot burst weapon that fires projectiles in a straight line. Identifying your threat is a huge part of Ghost Runner, and it's a skill that you'll develop quickly by playing the game. One good tip is to scope out the entirety of a room before you try and complete it. By doing this, you'll get a sense for where each enemy is, what types of enemies you're dealing with, and the order with which you plan to take them out. This may not seem like the most direct way to beat the game, but by scouting out an area, you'll most likely cut down on failed attempts, and while it's easy to jump back into the action, one of the things you're constantly fighting in Ghost Runner is the unknown. By removing that X factor, understanding your enemy, and scouting a location, you have the upper hand, the information you need to take down your targets and move on to the next challenge. Before we say goodbye, we have to talk about Sensory Boost, easily the most versatile tool in Ghost Runner. This is something you have access to from the very beginning of the game, and there's a reason for that. Sensory Boost allows you to slow down time and reposition while in this pseudo bullet time mode, and that's your biggest advantage when dealing with certain scenarios. The key to Sensory Boost is understanding how it works. It's independent of any other resource in the game, but you can manipulate your movements to gain access to it almost indefinitely. Sensory Boost refreshes based on your actions as a player. Anytime you grapple or touch or retouch a surface, the ability refreshes and you get the full allotment of time manipulation. This can be a game changer when in rooms with lots of grapple points, as it gives you almost infinite bullet time. Understand that there is no easy way to track this resource, you just have to be incredibly aware of your movements as a player. But knowing how the ability functions is a huge advantage and one that I think will change the trajectory of your gameplay. And there you have it friends, all the things I wish I knew sooner about Ghost Runner. The game is built to be challenging and nothing will replace trial and error. If you do have any questions or want to share some additional tips, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I do my best to answer any questions I see on our videos and try and point out your tips when they could potentially help other players. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing to Legacy Gaming. We do our best to put out new videos each and every day, and your support really does help. Finally, if you're interested, check out our Discord link below to tap into our community of nearly 6,000 members. We have a fantastic, growing base, but there's always room for a few new members. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.